Hello, hello, it's time for Fish and Friends. What's up, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Fish and Friends with Danny and Gina. I'm Danny. Gina's going to be a little bit late, but this is going to be a great one. Let me tell you, I cannot believe that we are already starting season three. How crazy is that? We've been, Gina and I have been doing this stream solid for two years completely now, and we're starting on to year three. That's just nuts. And, you know, we'll talk even more about how crazy that is as soon as, you know, Gina gets here. But she'll probably be here, hopefully, in about an hour um, because uh, she ended up, you know, switching shifts with a co-worker um, to – I'm not sure what the co-worker had going on, but I'm, I'm sure there's a pretty good reason as to why she would switch and all that. So, yeah, she'll join us here a little bit later. Um, but hey, how's it going, everybody? First one on Gina's side was ABC. How's it going, Aquatic Biotope and Creations? And shortly after hopping in on Gina's side, Skeddy Nona hopped in on my side. How you doing, Skeddy? We also got the Nano Aquarium guy over on Gina's side and Bunny Vipers over on Gina's side. We got James H. over on my side. Thank you, James, for that email you sent me. A little while ago or a couple a week ago, something like that. I appreciated that a lot. Um, Jeff King, what's up, Jeff? Uh, and let's see, Linda Worth popping in over here. How you doing, Linda? And Aquatic Moose. Yo, what's up? Good to see everybody. So, uh, yeah, we'll just go ahead and quickly address the elephant in the room or whatever um, about my my short, you know, just quick thing or whatever. That it's just like very simply that I know that like my my live streams and different things like that, like I people it doesn't send out notifications. My videos aren't popping up in people's like things when they're just like scrolling through their their shorts or whatever. I'm not like popping up in the algorithm or anything like that. And I'm not complaining about that at all when I say what I'm saying with that. All I'm saying with that is people that are here and watching the live stream and watching, you know, my content and stuff like that are the people that want to watch it you are literally choosing to watch this content so if this is content is not something that interests you then i don't i really just don't understand why you're here and that's the only thing that i was really trying to say it might have came across a little bit like harsh or whatever and uh i was having an issue with my contact too so that just made it look like even worse as far as me like looking like I was triggered or something like that. But it's just really that like, hey, if you don't like me, that's cool. I don't care. But you don't really have to be here. So that's it is what it is. Okay, I'm going to stay <laughs> at least till Gina comes. Well, there you go. <laughs> uh, man. But, uh, okay, so um, now that uh, we can actually talk about more stuff going on with me um, and, you know, we're doing a no more normal episode of Fish and Friends, um, updates on my car. So, um, 
Yeah, it's it's literally a choice. You have to click on the video. You have to search me up. <laughs> like, you have to want to watch it to even know that this live stream is even going on. So, um, but uh, so what's going on with my car? Uh, man, I've had some issues with my friggin' insurance and whatever else. Maybe some of it's my fault. But it shouldn't be. So, okay. Two weeks ago, on two weeks ago on Thursday, so two weeks in two days or whatever, there was a big hailstorm when I was at work and my car was parked where the hailstorm was and my car just got pelted with hail, right? I told you guys all about that two weeks ago. And... I showed you guys all the pictures. I could show you guys all the pictures again, but I'm not really feeling like doing that. So whatever. You guys have seen the pictures. If you haven't, just flip back to you know the last episode of Fish and Friends Season 2. Um, <coughs> but so that Friday morning, I filled out on the app my claim. And I realized how easy it was to fill out the claim. It's just like, oh, yeah, you'll fill it out with the app. It's super easy. You don't have to wait on hold or anything like that. And you don't have to awkwardly talk to any person that you might not be able to understand because they, you know, just might not have the most uh, clear English. And I already struggle understanding most people on the phone. So if they don't speak very clearly... I just really struggle with it. Um, and, you know, it can be – anyway, I'm not getting into that. But uh, so I filled it out on the app. I'm like, okay, this was super easy. And so, like, a whole week had passed. And I didn't, like, hear anything. My car just kind of kept sitting in the uh, in the parking lot at my work. and. I thought I had seen something in like a correspondence or whatever that it's just like, we still don't know where your car is located or something like that. And it's just like, well, if you guys needed to know where my car was or something like that to check it out, to appraise it or whatever for damage, like you should have just said something or you should have like called me or something like that, you know, like, and so I called them on that Thursday like a week later on Thursday, as it so like what's kind of going on with my car and like well we need some more information and all stuff so I'm like okay well all that I gave them the information they needed and they towed it like the very next day. So it was towed on the Friday. So one week ago Friday my car was towed to um, the State Farm affiliated scrapyard junkyard or whatever you know just to hold it you know until they figure out like how much it's gonna like cost and everything like that and all that so i'm like okay cool it's all good so it sat there and it sat there and it was a couple days past and a couple more days and all of a sudden, it's like it's Thursday again. A whole other week had passed, and I still hadn't heard anything. So I call my insurance, and I get on the phone with somebody that is somebody that I just am struggling to kind of understand what they're saying. But out of all of it, like the questions and stuff that I'm asking, it's just like, well, it looks like we haven't really heard anything about your car or whatever yet. So um, if you want. Uh, I guess just you can just continue to wait and we'll get in contact with you. Or um, what you can do is you can always call Copart if you want and, uh, you know, see if they have any more information there. And so I'm like, okay. So right after I get off the phone with them, which I sat on hold for like five to seven minutes before I even got to talk to the person. And so then after talking to him, I immediately call Copart and I sit on hold for like 10 minutes before they answer. And I finally talk to them. And the lady that I'm talking to is just more or less like, I don't even know why you're calling me. 
like uh, all the information that you would want would be with State Farm. Like they're the ones that do the appraisals and the claims and all that stuff. Like we're just we're just a holding place. Like your car is just like sitting here and there's no like fees or anything that you're paying for. Cause you know, sometimes if people get it towed to different places, they have to pay like holding fees and stuff like that. So we're more or less just like a free holding place. Like all that stuff is supposed to be with them. So I'm like, okay. So I call state farm again immediately after that. Sit on hold again for probably almost 10 minutes and then finally get on the phone. And so I'm just like, listen, like, and I explained the whole thing that I just explained to you about how I went back and forth. I already called you guys. They told me to go to Copart. Copart's like, why the fuck are you talking to us? And so now I'm talking to you, Darby. What are you going to do? How are you going to help me? What's going on with my car? I need to know what's going on with my car. Like I'm running out of rental time. I've already rented this car for two weeks. You guys are saying you're only going to cover it up to like April 5th. Well, I can't go car shopping every day of the week or anything like that. I am at work from 7 a.m. all the way until like 7 p.m. Like there's no car shopping. There's no anything like that. Like I can't even keep up with mowing my own lawn. You know, because I have to wait until like, you know, a weekend and then all of a sudden the weekend that I need to mow, it freaking rains. And so I can't mow. And look. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting a little worked up. But anyway, the lady's just like, so uh, Darby was fantastic. And I even I complimented her and then and uh, I went forward and complimented more or less her manager, I guess, or there's somebody above her and uh but she was just like i'm just gonna be completely honest with you there was an error on our mistake it looks like somebody didn't actually put in to do anything with your car so it's like i don't remember exactly the words that she used but more or less my car had been sitting there nothing had been done and there was no paperwork that even said anything was supposed to be done to my car. So if I wouldn't have called, nothing would have happened. And she put me straight forward to like the chaos specialist or something like that. Basically somebody that had more power than she had to just expedite this and get it done right away. And when am I going to do cornrows with that long hair? Is it true nitrates are not important in the fish tank? We will get to that. I've never done cornrows. I have done pleats, like micro braids before, but my hair is so thin because it's like, it's very dark, but it is still blonde. Like it's very, very thin hair. And uh, so it, when I do the blur, the braids, it just doesn't really fill my head very much to where it just like looks almost like I'm bald with like weird stringy stuff coming out. I just don't like the way it looks. Um, we'll get to the nitrate things soon, but so so they will be paying for your rental. Oh, they've been paying for the rental. They've only, but they were going to say they're only covering it. So more or less, because it's a State Farm error, they're going to like add an additional week onto my state farm or my rental coverage. But honestly, they don't even, they don't even have to do that. And I got it all figured out now and I'm getting to that point. But so I talked to this guy, Mark Finch or whatever. He's the chaos specialist. He's just like, listen, I understand, but I got it. This is what's going to happen. I'm going to take, get all this taken care of. Um, I'm going to get you in all this information. I'm going to look at the value of your car and all this stuff. And I'm going to get you. And by the time I'm going to get this all figured out, I will call you tomorrow and all this stuff. And uh, I told him, it's like, well, also, you know, there's like a brand new engine in there. Like uh, I want, you know, good value because that engine itself has like less than 5,000 miles on it. So she'll be Gina will be here. She's a little late. Um, she's had to work. She switched. Shifts with somebody, so she's closing the store. She'll probably be here, hopefully by nine. Um, did you just tell us I'm going bald? I will be going bald at some point. 
potentially. We'll get there. You guys are asking so many questions, and my ADD is telling me to look at the questions versus just continuing to talk and potentially scroll back later. So I'm going to not look at the chat for a second as I finish talking. So my car, so he called me Friday, uh, yesterday, told me how much they're going to pay for my car. There we go. Gene is almost done. I need a drink. My mouth gets so dry when I talk so much. Which is another topic for later. Um, but. So he called me and all this stuff. So I got all the information. He said he couldn't get in contact with St. Charles Hyundai where I bought my car and where they did the, the engine work and stuff to get the information. But luckily when I got home from work, I was able to find the receipt for the engine. So I uploaded that and I emailed it directly to him too, so that he can look that over and he'll hopefully call me on Monday and I'll actually, you know, get my final value and they'll you know send me my digital check more or less because i picked digital payment and hopefully it will be uh you know directly deposited right into my checking account but uh so it's i, I get the value for the car and then he said i get like a credit for the engine or something like that i'm not sure if that means like they'll just like pay for my monthly insurance for like a month or two to pay for the engine or something like that. It better be more than a month or two. That engine's got good value, but uh, the scrapyard's definitely going to get good money off of that engine, you know, before they just smush the rest of the car. But, um, whew. my car is being totaled. They're going to give me the value. I've already decided that I'm not going to continue with my car. But I started looking at other cars. I had set up a, a, a test drive today for more or less the same car that I had. But instead of being a 2016 red Hyundai Veloster with the style package. It was the um, 2014 black Hyundai Veloster with the style package. And I was going to get that. But there was like no pictures of it yet. Um, they did have the Carfax and how the, it was only one owner and that he did some upgrades on the car even, and it was a really good price. So I was like super excited for this one. Um, and I still might, I don't know, decide to go for that one. We shall see what happens. But as far as right now, I've already put $500 down on another car. Um, there's a 2012 uh, Hyundai Veloster that is silver. I don't think it has the style package or whatever, maybe, but it still has like the LCD screen. I don't think it has a backup camera, but it has a CD player, which is interesting. I haven't had a CD player in my car in a while, so that's kind of fun. But I think it still might be able to connect to my phone and play music through my phone, which is good. And because uh, that's what I predominantly do is just listen to Spotify through my phone. Um, but this one's a manual. And, you know, after driving my uh, my nephew's, well, I guess technically my sister and brother-in-law's uh, little stick shift car. It kind of reminded me of driving the other stick shifts that I used to. And I kind of like driving a manual. And this one has a really, really nice smooth stick. Really nice, good clutch. Um, it drives good. The only issue with it 
was that the air conditioner was having some sort of issue. I'm not sure if it was an electrical issue, if it was a blower issue, if it was a compressor, compressor, compressor issue, or uh, uh, well, it definitely needed some Freon for sure because it wasn't getting cold. But like, I would turn the AC like all the way up. And it, like, wouldn't do anything. And then I'd kind of, like, fiddle with it. And then it would, like, start blowing, like, fully, like, all the way. And then I'd try to, like, turn it down a little bit. And then it would just, like, stop and other stuff like that. So AC can be very pricey to fix. Exactly. And, yeah, no air and AC up. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I'm like, I can't deal with no, no AC in you know, St. Louis, you know, temperatures or whatever, like all that stuff, especially with summer right around the corner. Well, spring at least for sure. We're already in spring technically. Um, but he said, it's like, we will fix the AC. So I'm like, okay. Like, uh, I put $500 down and, uh, in the contract of the deposit river it says fix the AC. And so if they don't get the AC fixed, I get my deposit back. If they do get the AC fixed, then um I either sacrifice my five hundred dollars or I you know go forward and buy the car. So um if I can't somehow work out to test drive this other Veloster. And have it just be a knockout of the park, like really good car. Um, then I'm gonna go ahead and get the 2012 instead of the 2014. The 2014 was definitely a better option, potentially. Um, but it hasn't been serviced yet. And I'm also kind of nervous that maybe it might look a little rough or something. It has no reported accidents, and there was only one or owner. But I the when I went to the lot today for the, this other Veloster, I was originally going for a black Veloster that was a turbo as well. But that one, even though it looked good in all the pictures, when you got up to it, there was a lot of scratches. The the windshield was broke. And he's like, oh no, we're gonna fix the windshield and all that stuff. I'm like, okay. Um so more or less, this place is a little sketchy, um, but it's kind of like one of those, like, <laughs> it seems like if you point it out, they'll, they'll be like, we'll fix it, you know, and no adjustment to the price or anything like that. So it's just like, okay, if you guys fix it, oh no, <laughs> like, oh no, I don't know, I, I, I'm only feeling like it's a little sketchy, but it's just because I don't know. I don't want to say anything because like, I don't want it, anybody to take it the wrong way. Um, but I did have a little bit of hard time getting like anybody to like pay attention to me and give me service anyway. And I think part of the reason was also just because one, they were a little bit, well, they actually weren't really that busy. It didn't seem like, but it was already like too late in the day and the they do their um, financing through a bank. And so like more or less, they couldn't do any more financing that day. So if you weren't like sitting there, like I'm going to pay cash for this car or whatever, they would just kind of like, I don't know, in the middle of doing other things or whatever else. It seemed like I was sitting there like waiting to get service and other people were like getting service instead. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. I kind of have that like I'm invisible in public sort of deal, it seems like. But then the strangest people will also come up to me and just tell me their life story for no reason. I guess that's because nobody else notices I exist. I don't know. It's weird stuff. Well, we had some more people coming. I haven't officially said hi to Lady Diane. 
the Ark Knight is here on Gina's side. Fish Fam Link is always here, being the awesome mod that it is. The Nano Aquarium guy. What's up? Uh, James B. What's up, dude? And yeah, Johnny from Dan's Fish with that. Yeah, AC can be very pricey to fix. Yeah. Tell him to also fix my heat or it's no chill. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I kind of read heart the first time, too. <laughs> Pile Aquatics is here. Good evening. Yes, yes. It's good to see you guys. We got 20 people watching. Make sure you all smash that like. And uh, I know you're all subscribed. You wouldn't be chatting if you weren't subscribed. But yeah, make sure you smash that like button. Because that's what actually sends out the notification to, you know, the people that aren't watching. Um, apparently. I forgot. Well, don't forget. Do it. Do it now. Do it now. <laughs> so the weather's starting to warm up. I have been putting my lemon tree outside. I've had to bring it inside a couple nights where it's kind of gotten chilly. But, uh, yeah, as long as it gets below freezing, I got to take that lemon tree inside. Just not going to even chance it for one night, even if it only gets below freezing for like one hour or two. Like, I'm not even just not even chancing it. But Didi's Finden is here. How you doing? Vinoski Fish Koto's here. What's up? My butt is getting huge from ice cream. You're welcome, I think is what you uh, really mean. I mean, thank you, and then I, I say you're welcome. Um, Hydro Oasis Jack Leaves, Natural Leaves for Aquatic Habitats. I got this at Pet Supplies Plus, where I used to work. It's a little pricey, honestly. I think I think this bag was like I don't know, six bucks, seven bucks for ten jack leaves. Um and you know they're they're about this big. So a viewer a little bit bigger than that. Um but it's nice to start the seat or oh, that's cheap. Maybe it was a little bit more than that. I don't know. I don't remember exactly how much it was. But anyway, it's the real point of what I was getting towards is that it was nice to uh, it was nice to see that sort of stuff at Pet Supplies Plus because when I worked there, we didn't have any of that stuff, and that was the one thing that I was just really disappointed with because. Some of the people that the customers that really were connecting with their fish and were asking all the good questions and wanting to do their tanks, you know, the right way and stuff like that with plants and, you know, and all this, this way, the right way. Like we didn't, we had some plants, but we didn't have like leaves and, we didn't really have much of stuff as far as like doing things the bioactive way. Um, especially with like your know, terrariums and all that too. Everything was just that coconut husk and fake plastic plants and all that stuff. Whereas now they have a, they don't have, well, no, they do. They have some real plants that, you know, they don't really have the best setup for, so they should really start, like, try to sell those. Well, they are really hoping to sell those faster than they do, unfortunately. They need to get the right setup for those plants. But they have plants. They sell springtail cultures. They sell 
different um, isopod cultures. They have like the the a dairy cow isopods and the orange isopods and the powder blue isopods. Um, and then they have botanicals. They have a bunch of botanicals. And uh, yet KJE also has a whole bunch of botanicals. He has jackfruit leaves for five fifty. Mulberry leaves are my shrimp's new favorite. Yes, in fact, mulberry leaves are what um, uh, Detroit Shrimp Aquatics, um, which is now a Motor City Aquatics, I believe is his current name. I haven't seen seen that guy in a while. He probably still live streams and stuff here and there, but just like me, he doesn't get any algorithmic attention. So, um, I haven't seen him, but he, his, uh, shrimp crack that he sells in his little crack sacks is dried mulberry leaves that he grinds up really fine. Um, and shrimp love it. Shrimp loves to chew on mulberry leaves. Um, but it's nice to see botanicals and all different stuff for bioactivity in like terrariums and uh, all that different stuff there because, you know, they can finally start to push people to do the right thing as far as trying to create as much of a natural environment for their uh, creatures as possible, which when you do that, you get to see them interact in such a cool way. In fact, right before the stream, I was going around and I was misting stuff and all that. And, uh, I mean, I get to see him, but you have to, like, really look in there to see him. But Randall, my golden gecko, like, he tends to hide, like, way up here in the back. Sometimes, most of the time, he's up on there, but... Sometimes he'll be like on the front, like in this panel, like it almost looks like he's there now just because of the lighting, but he's not. But that's kind of the spot where he will hang out there. And uh, but what was really nice was I was misting and he was kind of moving around and I kind of got the feeling that he might jump and stuff like that. And uh, pretty much right at the moment that he was going to jump, I ended up shutting the glass. And he, but he jumped down like right on to the piece of wood right here, the little wood bridge that I wanted. I was sitting right there, and it was like the perfect spot to actually see him. And I knew I wasn't going to even get the chance to like try to take a picture. So I didn't even try because my phone takes a second to load the camera and I had already had it set on backwards view and it was going to have to like flip it to, you know, facing backward to get the good shot anyway. And so I just enjoyed the moment for what it was and watched him kind of climb over and like look up at the leaves and hop up. And then he just hopped up there and just climbed back to where he was. And I got to see him just interact as the wild animal in the little natural habitat that he's in. So, yeah, Brian with Motor City Aquatics definitely is up. Yeah. That's why I learned about Mulberry. Love Brian. Yep. Brian's awesome. And, uh, yeah, so it's just really nice to get to see that sort of stuff. And, it would be so cool to like, you know, like work at a zoo or something like that and be the person that gets to set up all those, you know, things. Like, you know, Serpent Design gets to do that sort of stuff, you know. And uh there's other people that, you know, do that, but they don't have like, you know, YouTube channels necessarily. And then, uh, you know, there's a lot of people that do that as far as, like, you know, saltwater tanks set up and maintain and all that. But, man, it would have been awesome to, like, get a job at the aquarium and get to, like, set up all those different things and help maintain the animals there and just get paid to do that. Do I ever take him out? Not Brian. 
Randall the Gecko. Yeah, it's Randall, like from Monsters, Inc., because he's one of those, like, stick-to-the-wall geckos, and he's got kind of purpley stripes and all that stuff. So uh, I call him Randall. And I've called him that ever since he was at the pet store. Um, somebody else took him in and uh, adopted him and couldn't really take care of him as much. And so he gave him to me. But I don't know why it's not loading good quality. But this is what they look like. In fact, this is the picture that I used of a golden gecko. And I cut it out to uh, use for um, my thumbnail for when I built his enclosure. But this is what they look they look like. Sometimes they get darker when they're kind of more camouflaged. Sometimes they get kind of lighter colored like that. But they're very cool. But... No, I don't ever take him out because he is very much a wild animal and his skin is like delicate. He's pretty fragile. He's gotten out a couple times and I've had to catch him, but he like climbs up the walls and all that stuff. But he's very fast. He just wants to jump. I don't want him to get hurt. I've gotten him to calm down before to where I have held him before. And after I've caught him, I've eventually gotten to calm down to where I kind of held him. And in fact, the one time I actually ever got him to like really calm down and be able to hold him like that and do cool things. It was when I shot the video for creating his tank. And I introduced him. I'm like, this is Randall. He's my golden gecko. He's really cool. That was the only time he ever just sat in my hand and just like stood there. So I was like, I got to take advantage of this moment. Um, so if you want to see more about him and this enclosure, uh, you can always check out the video. It's kind of old, um, but it's on my channel. And I'm going to try to, uh, is, there we go. Yeah, it's pretty popular, so I can uh, find it. Go ahead and paste it. Bam. <laughs> you can click that link if you want, and uh, then you can freaking... Watch the video. I kind of introduce him and all that stuff, but it's mainly just pretty much a cinematic creation of this. I go all the way from the beginning. I don't say anything during the creation part of it. I just have music going, and it's all like sped up really fast, so you can just see me build it. It took me several days to do it, and I had because there's drawing processes and all that stuff too. But it, I don't know, it's pretty cool. It might start out a little slow. You maybe want to, might want to skip a few parts. I don't know, that's up to you. But uh, definitely gets pretty intense, and it just. It's a, it's honestly it, it's one of my better videos because it starts out kind of simple and just builds and builds and ends on a nice climax as uh, every story, video, movie, storybook, whatever should. It's a, a, a build, a climax, and a resolution, right? Um, everybody remembers that from high school literature class or whatever, right? Or am I the only person that remembers anything from school? But, uh, yeah. Aqua Garden Zen consolidated all my tanks into 160 breeder. Nice. 
I like the 60 breeder. I still haven't gotten mine finished yet. Um, I'm gonna. I'm going to get it finished though. I gotta finish this sump. Is the first part. Once I finish the sump, then I gotta drill the tank, and then after I drill the tank and get the uh, the sump all fitted and all that stuff, then I just gotta you know buy the substrate and uh, glue all the rocks together. I already have it pretty much scaped out how I want it, but. I got to drill the tank still so nothing's glued together. What school? <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. So I think my mollies, at least one of them, is being a no good jerk. I'm pretty sure I saw some babies a couple weeks ago. At least one for sure. But when I saw it and noticed it, I wasn't the only thing that noticed it. And I saw, you know, the uh, Molly kind of chase it into like the rocks and stuff. One, well, I say a Molly. One of the adults chase it into the rocks. And so I don't know if it ends up eating it or what. But I haven't seen it since. I haven't seen any babies since. I still got the two young adults, adolescents. You know, they're only about, I don't know, about an inch. Maybe an inch and a quarter. Full on, like, you know, tip to tip. Inch and a quarter, maybe. But there's one female, most likely female, and the one that's a definite male that has, you know, the, the gonopodium and he's flicking it around and all that stuff. So, and then I have now three adult females that are all a little bit different. Two standard Dalmatians, one's a little bit more black one, and the other one's a little bit more white. And then I have one that's kind of a, uh, it was a, in the liar tail, but it's got kind of like the Dalmatian spots, but then it has like almost like a creamsicle look where it's like orange on top and white on the bottom. But instead of being like orange, orange, it's kind of this like greenish bronzy orange. So I like it. Uh, but that's the one that's kind of more of the jerk even though it was like the healthiest of all of them. And this, that's probably why it's more of the jerk. But it's like, I think it probably ate all the babies. And it sucks. Because if you guys are going to eat all your babies, well, then how, how am I going to use you guys for food for cuttlefish? They're supposed, your babies are supposed to be cuttlefish food. Not, not, not you food. Stupid mollies. Cave of wonders. Fish orange wide eyes. Wavy hand with headphones. I'm a wavy he hand with headphones. Let's see if I can... Anyway, <laughs> if Gina pops in, someone tell her I said I gotta get piano practice in before the others go to bed. Well, all right, Dee Dee, you have a good night with piano practice. It's good to see you. Don't forget to pop in on my side of the stream too and hit that thumbs up before you go. There should be a link in the, her description. Um, and I have a link in my description to hop over and subscribe to Gina as well. So make sure you subscribe to Gina's channel. She will be here soon, hopefully. 
<coughs> Hopefully in the next 15 minutes she'll be here. Um because I am I'm running low on coffee. And if I have to keep holding up this stream, <laughs> I might have to go and get another drink. Because I've noticed that now, okay, so I'm let me start kind of at the beginning. Uh I started kind of I was flipping through my YouTube on shorts and I stumbled across this guy that, you know, apparently his like Instagram and YouTube and stuff like that is about his like singing and stuff like that and how he like sings in all different ways and whatever else. But his talking voice is like, super duper deep it's like this like all the time he just like talks like very very relaxed and it's just like really quiet but he just like turns up the volume really really loud and it's like people hear me talk like this all the time but wonder how i sing really high notes well actually it's really easy to do <laughs> and it's just like but that's just what he talks like and uh but that led to some other things where it's just like you know a lot of great jeff impression <laughs> <laughs> but he a lot of vocalists um you know axel rose uh Johann Sebastian Bach, that was the lead singer of Skid Row. Um, there's a lot of examples, but a lot of those guys actually have really deep voices most of the time when you like talk to them, when you interview them. In fact, like Brett Michaels pretty much is at this exact like level when it comes to pitch and how he talks. I probably don't necessarily sound like a Brett Michaels impersonation, but this is like the pitch. And, uh, but when he sings, it's like much higher and all that stuff, you know, don't need nothing, but it you know, all that stuff. So when it comes down to it, and the whole kind of point of all this stuff is that, you know, when you're talking like that, you're not you're not really straining your voice as much. In fact, your voice is just like super relaxed and you're just like using minimal effort to like do anything at all. And it's just uh and uh you know uh this the DJ on um KC95 kind of was like talking about it the other day too about how like yeah you relax your voice so that you know when you're doing that you're not straining your voice and so that it does give you the ability to sing those higher notes more and it's as somebody like I'm not a professional vocalist and I'm not going to like act like I am but you guys have seen my videos. You've heard me sing and different stuff like that. That's why I've gotten some 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 of the subscribers that I do because of my different parody songs and stuff like that. Maybe it's not necessarily because of how I sing. Maybe it's just more of the song and you find it funny or whatever. But anyway, I go out for karaoke on Sundays and Thursdays. I've been singing my entire life. I may not be a professional and I may not be in a band or anything like that but I sing a lot and when I go for karaoke it's quite interesting that I definitely notice that the nights that I go by myself and I just kind of sit there and chill and just eat my food drink my drinks go up there sing my song go back and sit down and just kind of chill and Look over the TV, look at my phone, do some different stuff and go up and sing another song and whatever else. Those nights I can 
like I can use my voice a whole lot more. It's the nights that I'm there, that a lot of my friends are there, that my brother and my sister are there, that I'm having a lot more conversation and I'm having to like strain my voice and talk loud because the bar is loud and I'm having to like do all that stuff. Those are the nights that I lose my voice. And by the end of the night, I can barely sing like anything because I'm just using my voice too much. And I'm straining it and all those different things. Um, <laughs> but yeah, there's some nights that I'll come in and I can freaking right dream on like nobody's business. But then it, the same time I will try to do that song on another night and I will totally mess it up because I just, I talk too much or whatever else. <laughs> or I sang too many songs and then somebody like more or less really requested me to do it. And I thought I could do it, but I really couldn't. But sometimes I can do a lot more and sometimes I can't. Um, and it sucks when like you think that your voice is ready for something and it's not. <laughs> and so like, I've, I've had like performances that have like, I thought have been like not very good because as just like, I've had much better performances and my voice has worked exactly how I wanted it to and all that stuff on different times. And do I get off stage or whatever? And then people are like, oh my God, that's incredible. And it's like, man, you should hear it on a good night. Because <laughs> that was awful. <laughs> Great. Jeff. Oh, is this the Jeff? You talk? Is that how Jeff talks? I don't think I've ever watched Jeff Kane's videos. In fact, that's the first time I've realized that that's like a fishing picture. He's like holding a fish up or something, isn't he? Can I even find Jeff King? No. Nope. Definitely not going to be able to find Jeff Kane on uh, YouTube just by searching his name. Uh. <laughs> Jeff King Go to the channel There we go <clears throat> Subscribe Copy Paste Bam. Everybody subscribe to Jeff Kane. Look at that. That's a regular old man with a big old beard and catching a badass fish. Look at that. That's a man. All right. I'm gonna have to catch out uh catch some of Jeff's videos. He's got 141. Oh, 142 now if it adds me or something like that. Um, oh, I gotta check out Jeff's stuff. Honestly, this whole time when I've seen your little bitty avatar picture, I thought you were like in an army uniform. Like your 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 bucket hat kind of looked more like it just. Mm, uh, molded with the forest and became one solid pattern to where I thought it was a helmet. And then, like, all your other stuff, it looked like you were wearing, like, body armor and stuff. It looked like one of my old army pictures. I wasn't sure as far... I wasn't sure as to what the fish actually was. But that's just what I saw. was just, like, a little army dude. It's interesting what, you know, our eyes see sometimes, right? And it's not just our eyes, our ears, 
and stuff like that while we hear. Sometimes you hear what you want to hear versus what is actually said. Or sometimes you see what you want to see, you know, or, or, you know, you pick up on certain biases as well, you know. Um, if you're a Christian, you know, and you believe in Jesus, you know, everything that you see, you're, you're going to see Jesus in it. But, you know, if, if you're, you know, a fish keeper like us or whatever, fishy freaks, everything that, you know, can hold water, you're like, hmm, can I put fish in that? I can hold water. Like, is that a, do I want to make a little, a little pond? Or, you know, like, you see and hear what is familiar. Yeah, exactly. That, you know, you see what you're, you see and hear also what you're expecting. Me especially, too. Like, because I have, uh, I have, like, auditory perception, or not perception, auditory processing disorder. And uh, it goes along with my um area of the spectrum and so i i have a a lot a, a hard time understanding people and uh a hard time processing what people say um i have to like really really focus and like sometimes even like read their lips too that's why i uh have a hard time talking on the phone um because like i can't like see what people are saying and so when uh when i go through different things and i um i have to like you know a lot of my interactions with people and stuff is is like scripted it's like I, I play this I play this certain character in different situations, you know. Um sometimes I'm just like the nobody talk to me, I'm invisible sort of character. Sometimes I'm the the salesman character. Um sometimes I'm the I'm my I'm my parents' son character. Sometimes I'm the 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 brother to my my siblings character. Um, everybody has their own character that they get most of the time. But uh, I forgot exactly where I was going with this. But but the uh, like the salesman character, you know, has like a certain script that I go through. Like you know, I'm always like, hey, how you doing? You know, and expecting a certain sort of response back and I'm expecting things to kind of go a certain way. You know, I say this sort of thing and you respond with this sort of thing. And I get, you know, go through the sales and you say whether you want any of them or not. And then, you know, after I get your order, I go get your food and I bring it back to you. You say, thank you. I say, no problem. And then I tell you that I'll be back in two weeks or whatever the day is and have a great one. I'll see you next time. And I move on. But sometimes people don't always go by the script. I mean, of course, the script is only in my head. But like when people don't go by the script or like they say something that I'm like completely not expecting it literally doesn't even sound like English. It it's it's like what I will hear words and I will hear something, but I won't understand it at all. Uh Danny, what am I talking exactly? <laughs> You friggin' neurotypicals just won't understand it at all. But the script is fluid. <laughs> yeah. Regular interactions with people is so difficult for me. Like, <laughs> every. 
like when I'm talking, I know you just kind of came in here saying that you're probably in the middle of it, but I'm talking about how like my area of where I'm at on the autism spectrum. One of the things that I, I, I struggle with basic interactions and I like have a script in thing for how interactions go most of the time because I have to like physically think about this stuff to seem normal to people. Um, and so it's like, you know, when somebody asks you like, Hey, what's up or whatever you're supposed to be like, Oh, not much. How you doing? Like, that's what you're supposed to do. You're not supposed to ignore them or whatever, or I, I don't know. And so like, <laughs> Gina just got home. She will be on in a few. Excellent. I did not know you had autism. I didn't know for like 32 years. And technically, I'm not um I'm not diagnosed. I've never been actually diagnosed, but it is after hearing so many people's uh experiences and when they got diagnosed at like the same age that I was at that was I was I went to this guy I gotta I gotta remember what his YouTube channel is now because I haven't watched it in a while it's what is it ah uh, ah uh, man I cannot I gotta look at my subscriptions because I'm subscribed to him uh But this guy who is basically, he's, I think he's like a year older than me, but he found out that he was diagnosed with autism when he was 32 years old. And I was 32 years old when I was like listening to his videos and literally everything that he was describing about his childhood and talking about stuff from his point of view, I just... I empathize with somebody in a way that I never empathized with somebody before. It was strange. Like I, the way people talk about their experiences, I don't, I, I don't seem to understand that. I don't understand neurotypicals the same way that most people just don't understand me. I've gone my entire life. like feeling like I'm just like, unloved and weird and just like struggle with like so many things that people just like shouldn't struggle with when like all of a sudden when I was like 32 years old and watching this guy's videos I finally was just like wait a minute like no I'm not I'm not like bad at all these things I'm just like really good at masking and all this stuff to where like so many people like thought I was just weird. And there was so many struggles that I had that I didn't have words for that. He finally gave me the words to describe what I was going through. And I'm trying to talk about it while I'm trying to like scroll through my subscriptions and I'm having trouble finding him. Now, when I'm scrolling through my subscriptions to where I cannot multitask, so I'm just going to shut up or say things slowly while I try to find him. Because he is just like he, he, he changed a huge part of my life. And help me get through a lot of things like like a therapist almost. Where is he? What was his name? Well, Freely Ashley is one of them. She's a she is autistic and she was also diagnosed when I think she was like 32 or 33 and uh, talks about a lot of stuff that she went through on her channel. 
So you can look up Freely Ashley if you want to. But dang it. What is this guy's name? There it is. Autism from the inside. Yeah. This guy. I had, I have no idea how I stumbled upon this channel because I wasn't looking for it. I literally, this is how I know I have it too because I was not looking for this. I did not, I was not like, oh, do I have autism? Like I didn't look it up. Like this, it literally was just like all of a sudden popped in my face and it's just like it all of a sudden my entire life finally just made sense. And it's just like, there's, there's Gina. Ding. I have autistic family members, some on the extreme side, some mild. I don't need a diagnosis to know I'm not normal in my head. I can manage. So exactly. I can manage. I am at a point to where like, I don't feel like I need medication, but there's definitely things that I struggle with that I just can't describe to people and you know my family like they grew up with me so they know how to deal with me and I know how to deal with my family they they understand that like I was always a little bit different but it's like my my parents like they've always they've always been there for me and I can I can tell that they've had to help me more than they've had to help any of my other siblings in a lot of different ways, but all my sisters are pretty self-sufficient. My brother's definitely self-sufficient. And after telling my brother, like the stuff that I, you know, feel or whatever, he's just like, you know what? Like, I never really thought about it all much, but you know what? You're, you're definitely autistic. And it's like, I know. Right. And got the tism. yeah, I got the tism, <laughs> but you know, there was things along that that it gave me a leg up in certain things. I'm, I'm really, really good at math, just naturally. And I'm really good at music, just naturally. Um, all the patterns and stuff just pop out at me. I can, I can find a pattern in anything. Those pictures where it's like a thousand zeros and it's like find the C, I find it in like three seconds. Or less, you know, when other people were like be looking on it forever. Where is it? Where is it? It just it just pops out at me like there it is. And uh so I pattern recognition is nuts. Um and so it's just like, but you know, along those lines of always having these struggles that I go through that I cannot that I just have so much. I, I struggle and I struggle to even explain my struggles to people to where, like, <laughs> yeah, welcome to your show, Gina. Yeah. I Thanks. struggle to explain my struggles to people to where, like, I, the second I, there is something that I'm good at, I just want to, I want to celebrate that I'm good at something. And, it comes off as I'm bragging sometimes. And then people get like, Danny, don't brag. And it's like, I'm sorry. It's like, there's all these things that I'm not good at. And I want to be good at something. Right. Just coming in, say hi, keep your head up. Thanks. Honestly, my head was never down. I appreciate everybody for their kind words. Jeff, uh, I mean, sorry, James H sent me an email. Um, Freaking Sketty Nona for coming up last week on the live stream. Like, I appreciate you guys um, for giving me all the kind words and stuff. Though, honestly, like, I was fine. They weren't necessarily needed. And, uh, you know, I handled the situation. So, but I do appreciate you for saying the things that you had to say. And hopefully coming from, you know, some other people's mouths and stuff to, uh, doesn't or helps everybody, you know, understand what ne what needed to be said. 
Pride isn't bad. It can be overwhelming to some. Yeah. Well, <laughs> according to the Bible, pride is bad. Well, according not just the Bible, but according to a lot of religions, pride is bad. But then, according to other people, they're like, no, pride is good. And then you got like pride month, pride this, be proud. Everything, pride. <laughs> Don't mind me, I'm just eating my cheese stick. I try to keep my comments public. Yeah. It's my one thing. Let me have my one thing. Yeah. Right. But see, yeah, sometimes people don't understand that it's like my one thing, I guess. Because they they see that I'm maybe good at a lot of things. But that's just because, like, I don't know, I'm masking my struggles. Or just keeping my mouth shut. It's, you know, it's really funny. As I've gotten older, I've learned... To just keep my mouth shut in a lot of situations and to just listen to what other people have to say. And what's a, it's amazing what people will come up with if you don't say anything. Like so, some people will come up with this whole character of who they think I am. And if I never say anything about it, well, they just continue to think that I'm that sort of person. And, uh, or, you know, if they never get the chance to, you know, get to know me, then as, as who I really am, then they continue to think like I'm some person that I'm not. A lot of people think that I'm just some jerk. But once you get to know me, like you realize, I just like to give people a hard time, but it's always in jest. Like I, I never, ever mean to hurt anybody's feelings. And if I do, like I'm sincerely sorry about that. You're good at guitar and music and other things. Yeah. And that's kind of what I was talking about. That's whole pattern stuff. And that's why I can't write music. But I could recognize the patterns in other people's music and you know, play other people's music pretty quickly, pick up on it, grab a lot of instruments and just play them and, you know, figure out the pattern to make the notes that I need. As I've gotten older, I've forgotten struggle to keep them up. Well, sometimes things need to be said. And that's why I made that short in the first place or whatever, you know, uh, sometimes things just need to be said. And so I'm going to say them. <laughs> I don't like conflict. I don't either. I don't like conflict. Oh, hello, Gina. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I ate two C6, so I think I'm okay for now. <laughs> How I'm was starving. Hard. Oh my God. We got the cutest little baby Fahaka pucker puffer pucker. Puffer in at work today, uh, the other day. He's like literally like an inch. He's the tiniest oh little baby. He's so freaking cute. We have him next to the pea puffer, so all the pea puffers are like trying to like get him, and he's just like <laughs> doopa doopa doo. <laughs> They're so freaking cute. Doopa doopa doo. <laughs> That's great. Oh man, putting my foot in my mouth is my one area of consistency. Yeah. Sometimes I intentionally put my foot in my mouth just because it's funny and I don't care. <laughs> um, but yeah, otherwise things have been going good. Um, we have a potential like corporate rock walk coming up this week. So we've been making sure all the displays are right. I just dusted around the store yesterday so i was kind of feeling my allergies a little bit today um yeah uh tomorrow i do have to work um i close tomorrow so i'm hoping it's gonna be dead so i can continue to kind of get ready for this again potential walk i say that because the last time they were in town they said they weren't gonna come to our store and then they showed up so yeah it's just best to just act like you're on the visit list 
prepare for the worst and hope for the best, right? Right. And if they don't come, cool, your store is nice and clean. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, there was one time when I was working at Pet Supplies Plus that they came in at, in at a time that they were not supposed to be there at all. <laughs> yeah. And it was not good. <laughs> Rachel, me too. Putting my foot in my mouth is one area of consistency. <laughs> me too. Doesn't it taste funny? Yeah. Elfish tanks. What's Hello. up? Did you see the title of my stream? Mm, I, I said it straight I in the title. I was like, I'm going to be late, but I'm coming. <laughs> oh, I'm Sorry, running everybody. late, but I'll be there. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> nice. It was like two days ago. My coworker was like, yeah, I'm having trouble finding babysitting. I'm like, you close every Saturday. Why is this an issue? But I guess their normal babysitter, because it's Easter, had, you know, maybe they do the night before Easter or something. Um, yep. So I was like, oh, okay, I'll switch. It's fine. It's fine. I just have a stream that I do every Saturday, but it's fine. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're still on board with continuing to do the stream every Saturday. Yeah. I just can't believe that it's been two complete years now of doing the live stream and we're starting on year three. I know. It's crazy. Ever since Biz ditched you three years ago? I know. What a <laughs> jerk. What a jerk. No, he got no, busy. No. He got really busy with his mom and his dad and his twins and yes. all this other stuff. To where he was even having a hard time keeping up with his own Monday night stream, let alone keeping <laughs> up with doing a second stream. Wow. <laughs> if he's listening, he knows I'm kidding. He knows I, I'm sassy with him because I love him. Yeah. Well, uh, I think he, maybe he was actually, that was an actual enthusiastic wow. It was like, wow, it's been two years. Oh, we don't. Chat delay. I don't know. And that's what I mean. Context, right? Context, chat delay. Sometimes need... people things take things the wrong way and they just roll with it and make a whole story on their own. We need emojis. <laughs> that's what emojis yeah. are for. <laughs> exactly. I need to know the emojis tone. Emojis are important. Texting, though it is like my favorite form of communication versus talking on the phone just because – I can understand what I'm reading a lot easier than I can understand what I'm hearing on the phone for some reason. But uh, yeah, context matters. You need emojis that lets you know that you're being sarcastic, not sarcastic. Oh, yeah. you, know. you were right. Well, for two years. <laughs> yeah, see? There, there you we go. go. <laughs> is it, wow, two years. Or is it... Wow, how dare you say that about Biz? Right. Like, <laughs> depending on which one you take, you might make Plushy out to be a good person or a horrible person. You see how this shit works? <laughs> um, yeah, I say our my aquatic specialist at work is on the spectrum. Um, more so than a lot of people. Like, he's on the spectrum. Um, and you see, yeah, there's people that are nonverbal. Yeah, and my, my cousin that's, is non that's, autistic. That's typically the uh, the line that most people go off of when they're like saying like whether you're like autistic or like just on the spectrum, yeah. like whether you're nonverbal or not. And a real quick point is that like I am verbal, but words don't work for me the way that they do a lot of other people. So yeah. even yeah, though I can say words. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I have to intervene with some customers who don't, uh, who don't 
realize and kind of empathize, not that it's really the customer's job to, but just not very understanding that he is autistic. Um, so sometimes I have to kind of intervene um, and explain things a little bit more in depth because a lot of people, especially in customer service, if you've worked customer service, people will throw like three questions at you at the same time. Yeah. He can't do that. Like he's uh, going to, yeah. he's going to stick to that first question and he's going to keep talking till he completely finishes that first question. He didn't even hear the other two questions. Like, I have to sometimes intervene and be like, no, one thing at a time. We're going to go through one thing at a time. <laughs> like, Well, there's that. But then also, like, sometimes people just try to keep hammering stuff at you. Mm -hmm. yep. And that's when, like, my brain just, like, literally just shuts down. Yeah. It just doesn't. It just. I just literally just sit there and like start glitching out. I think my eyes even start twitching and it's just like, wait, wait hold on. What, what do you, what, what, what do you want? Like, right. you, <laughs> you know, yeah. it's like you're saying this and you're, you're saying that like, I had a customer man that, like I said, I have my script that I go through. I I'm there. Hey, how you doing? Let me get you your food. Let me go through the sales. Let me move on and let's go. You know, whereas like all of a sudden she's just like, she's talking about her security system. And I was like, I don't know anything about ADT. I don't know anything about security systems. I've never had a security system. So I'm not helpful with that, even though I'm helpful with like cell phones and finding like, you know, pictures and whatever else on your phone, but I don't know anything about the ADT app. I don't know anything about that. She's asking me all these questions and I'm just, and she's like, but it's like, you're not authorized on my ADT thing and whatever else. And Schwanz isn't covered. And what I'm like, I don't know what you want. What do you want from me? Yeah. Do you want me to help you with the app? Uh, do, Schwantz being authorized on ADT has nothing to do with me selling you food. What, what? <laughs> I just don't know. I don't know what you want from me. <laughs> um, oh my God. I just had that with a lady, the sweet little old lady. She comes in and she's asking about rocks to put like in the bottom of her pots and stuff. I was like, well, oh. I mean, we have like the turtle the big chunky turtle gravel but that's like twenty dollars a bag for like a three pound bag that's really expensive for what you're using yeah. it for so i told her i was like yeah you'd be better off going to the hardware store she's like oh but i don't need a big old bag i'm like well it'd still be cheaper no tell her to this. go to, well oh you, you don't have it now but right but um in the actual like indoor potting section, they have decorative rocks. They have smaller bags of like little, uh, little bitty uh, lo red lava stone, mm -hmm. and you can use that to make a little layer in the bottom right. of your. You know? Well, and then she moved on. She's like, "So whenever I do this, do I have to like put a liner in it?" And I'm like, "I'm sorry, I I don't know that much about gardening. I." <laughs> like it's not gardening it's pots i'm like it's still gardening and i don't know i'm sorry <laughs> yeah, i think it's so. just gardening in a pot <laughs> i think so but i i work at a pet store i don't and i don't i don't that's not a hobby that i ever picked up really i'm kind of dabbling in it a little bit but i don't feel comfortable answering that question i'm sorry <laughs> it's a Okay, so yeah. <laughs> the answer to that question, though, is it kind of depends. Like, if she's wanting to use the rocks just for, like, weights on the bottom of the pot to, like, you know, prevent, like, add additional weight so the pot doesn't tip over as easily because, you know, some plants get a little top heavy, you know, you can do that. You can just add some heavier stones right on the bottom and then just add the dirt right on top no big issue, whatever it is, what it is. If you're trying to use the rocks to add like additional drainage, which is most likely what she was trying to do for like, um, uh, like succulents and cacti, you know, because those mm -hmm. need really good drainage. That's where you would want to use a little bit of a mesh layer. Like uh, you could use window screen 
or you know they sell that mesh stuff. You can even get like now I wouldn't get like geotextile fabric because that can kind of soak it up more. But yeah, some sort of like mesh layer for drainage because you add a thin layer of that. And then you, you'll add the layer and then you'll add the dirt on top. That way the dirt doesn't just get mixed in with the stones and the stones continue to be nice and clean so that the water can actually drain out versus pooling at the bottom of the pot with that little bitty hole at the bottom. Oh, speaking and, of which, that raspberry that you gave me, it survived. It's starting to leaf. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I didn't kill it. My raspberries are going nuts this year so far. They're just pushing out, and every little vine is just covered in little things. So yeah. I'm excited to get a crap ton of berries this year. So I'm, I'm going to make sure to put it but, in the ground. Speaking of that, so I'm not going to necessarily say it's going to happen. But so this whole thing with my car, that's a big change. I'm lo I lost my car, and I'm getting a new one. But it's not that big of a change because I'm still going to have a Hyundai Veloster most likely unless some crazy thing happens. Uh, it's just not going to be exactly the same. And, you know, in two weeks, I'm cutting all my hair off. I'm donating oh, it. Lots of changes. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to necessarily go bald unless uh, I don't like what my barber buddy Patrick does. Um, but I'm going to give him like, you know, full power over my head. Just be like, you know, this I'm cut off as much as you can for the donation part. You know, with the little ponytail thing. You get in the face. And then after that, just have fun. If you want to shave a spider web into the back of my head, whatever. Like, I don't, I'm not going to give him any suggestions because I just want him to literally <laughs> do his own thing. The only thing I'm going to tell him to do is no mullet. I don't want a mullet. Because <laughs> he's got a mullet, I believe. So they've been calling it a shag. Lately, they, they call it the new, the kind of new term for it is a shag. So if he mentions yeah. a shag, no. <laughs> yeah. No, no shag or mullet or whatever. You better not know I'm donating right here. We talked about that. We talked he's about that. But I've set up the appointment. Um, oh. Yeah! Oh. Do it! Do it! <laughs> It's the great cut of 2024, buddy. Anyway, um, so there's that. But then I know I've talked about it on live stream mainly in a way of complaining because it's annoying how people are constantly in contact with me. Hey, what are you? so I get these messages all the time. Hey, I want to buy your house. Yeah, hey, I want to buy your house. Is your house for sale? They're like, no, my house is not for sale. Leave me the fuck alone. Hey, I get a random call. Hello? Hi, is this here? I was just wondering about the house. I don't know. No, no, no. My house is not for sale. Take me off your list. Leave me the fuck alone. <laughs> well, my dad is also listed as like a co-owner of my house. It's just the way it all worked with the paperwork to get me the best deal um, as far as, uh, you know, financing and all that stuff. I didn't have decent enough credit to buy this house when I did, but thanks to my dad, I did. <laughs> exactly. I'd like to buy your house for cash. Well, my dad got one of those in the mail, and he's been getting them and always throwing them away, but this one, this one was actually a pretty decent offer. Uh -oh. And it was more or less a check. For saying we will buy your house for this much as is. And so it's just like, as is, you say. Because <laughs> my heater is going to be going out pretty soon, which means I'm going to need to get a new heater and I might as well get an AC unit at the same time. So that'll save me eight or nine grand. Uh, I'm going to need new carpet if I ever wanted to sell this house because of all my animals and all that stuff. So that'll save me a lot of money. So it's like, if I can make 20 grand on the house, it yeah. might be worth it. 
Moose, hello. Because there might be a house that's decent enough that's closer to my family, which helps me with some of the different struggles that I have. Um, and then, you know, it's just nice to be closer to family in general. But I've always wished I had a little bit more house than what I have. I wish I had a basement for sure. I, I didn't care about a basement at first, but six months into not having a basement, I wish I had a freaking basement. Just because I have to use my third bedroom for storage. It's just literally full of everything. Because I got nowhere else to put it. So, and it's like I could just throw it all away. I don't really need it, but it's a, but. Some of that stuff I could potentially use if I had a little bit more space. Danny, you should just get a yacht. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> sure. Um, I'm not going to tell you all my financial stuff or whatever. You guys don't need all my business up in here. But Well, I was going to say with the housing market, I don't know if you'd really get anything if it's only 20 grand over. Right. Um, it It is what it is, you know. And that's why, you know, my, my aunt, that's a real estate agent, an actual realtor, uh, you know, my dad's kind of, my dad, okay, so when I called my dad about talking to my car, he told me about this. He's like, would you be open, you know, to talking about this sort of thing? And I'm like, yeah, like, I'm open to it. Um, but my... Uh, so my aunt is kind of going to get back to him about like, you know, how much does a, you know, basic starter home kind of go for these days compared to what they were, you know, four and a half years ago. And uh, so we're kind of looking into it or whatever. Like, like I almost didn't even want to say anything because it's it probably is not even going to happen. I'm probably not going to move, but it's just like, this could be a year of a whole bunch of changes. Uh, because, but along those lines, I'm only going to move if it's an actual upgrade. Yeah. Like I would like to have more house. Yes. But I am really starting to enjoy my yard. I've been doing a lot of work on it. I've been getting all these different plants going. I got seven blueberry bushes. I got two varieties of raspberries. I got the blackberries. I just got my, all of this garden area reset and ready to grow a whole bunch of stuff for this year. I've been digging out this entire pond. Like, I'm just starting to like all this stuff. And so then my dad kind of mentioned to me also that it's like, well, you know, your Uncle Lorian, you know, has been gone for a few years now. And your Aunt Evelyn has been in a home for like a whole year now. And so their house, just like my parents' house was, my dad talking, talking about my grandparents, um, is just kind of sitting there for right now. And they just kind of need to sell it or whatever. So, you know you might be able to, you know, talk to them and we'll see what kind of happens or we might be able to get a good deal with them because, you know, he's got a basement and a decent house. He built his house himself, just like your grandfather did. My dad talking to me about my grandfather. Um, so, and he's got like kind of a long but narrow, bigger yard and I believe he even already has a pond and all that stuff that's just sitting there and all that stuff too. It probably needs some work done on it, but I'm it's he's got a pond there, I'm pretty sure. So it's just like I don't know. Like that might actually be a decent option. Because I am still kinda I I, I know I mentioned it in our live stream once before. I'm disappointed that I wasn't ready to buy a house yet when my grandfather died, my grandmother moved out and we put their house up for sale because my grandfather built that house with his own bare hands, just him and his brothers. And 
Poor he, pl- he did all the plumbing. He did all the electric work. He did everything to where I know that house, that house is built. And like, it's good. And I, th- it had a great layout, an incredibly awesome basement that would have been perfect to just turn the entire basement into a massive aquarium. Like, oh man, I really wish I would have had that house. And there was somebody that lived in that house for like eight years and somebody that lived in there for a couple of years. But now apparently that house is more or less just a frat house. There's like some college student that owns it and he's got a whole bunch of his college buddies that just like all live and stay there. So it's an unofficial frat house more or less right now. And it's just like, oh, yeah. Like, I wish I could have could have had that house instead. But uh, you know, keeping one of my other, you know, houses that my grandfather was part of building, you know, having that would be nice, you know. So I I I see where you're going, Moose. I know where your head's at, but do you know how much it costs like maintenance and Paying staff because I don't think anybody in the fish fam knows how to man, how to maneuver a ship that big. Um, yeah, I get, I get it. I get where your head is. We I know that, but I don't. That is not realistic at all. <laughs> yeah. Plus, I mean, I would have to live the full life of like you know a pirate. No. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Pirates are real again. A- have you seen those I want, videos? I want to be a, uh, a, a, an American citizen. I just want to live my life on the open seas and just live live a lawless life. <laughs> I could maneuver a ship. Yeah. A big ship like that? A big cruise ship? I guess it doesn't have to be a massive one. I can do it as long as there's nothing around. <laughs> right. Can I pull it in a port? No. Um but uh, Jeff Kane could do maintenance and one of the pilot fish keepers could probably figure out captaining it. <laughs> yeah, Chris for a maneuver. I gotta say, I'm pretty sure flying a plane and being the... Uh, it's not the captain of the ship that actually steers the, the, the ship. Whatever they call that person, I'm sure it's a lot different. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess it wouldn't have to be like a big, <laughs> massive cruise ship. Anybody know how to parallel park this <laughs> thing? It doesn't have a backup camera, I can tell you that. <laughs> right. Oh, my God. Actually, well, it has radar, so I mean, kind of. Well, actually, a, a modern day yacht probably does have a backup camera on it. It's called the maneuverer, Danny. <laughs> Is it really called the maneuverer? No, I don't know. Let's Google it. Uh, who Name of the, pi- the pirate ship. that steers. A helmsman. 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 The man who steered the ship's wheel. Yeah. Was usually supervised by the quartermaster whose skill in navigation was also concerned with the ship's general course and with recording its speed. Although this role could easily, or this role could be taken by a pirate captain or a sailing master. Ah, okay. Chris says, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Chris says, I ran ran operations on the bridge for a large research vessel for two years when I was in my 20s. Oh! Well, operations is not steering. That's just the computer guy. <laughs> but you know what? Though it wasn't on a boat, I was military police and I went through evasive driving school and all this stuff. Like, I'm pretty skilled behind the wheel of a car. <laughs> I mean, That's Nathan does have his boating funny. license. He knows how to drive like a ski boat and a pontoon. Does, does that count? 
Oh, there you go. You got Nathan. Nathan's got a boating license. Nathan's got it. <laughs> All right. Why didn't you just say that at the beginning, Gina? Because he's about to come in the chat and be like, the fuck I will. <laughs> no, we got Nathan. Or he's going to pop in here to be like, the fuck? Are I'll you be trying the to volunteer me for? <laughs> I'll just keep track of direction and speed of ship. I would be lousy. I'd probably just be in the kitchen. I'd be I'd be helping out. Who gets to be the anchor? <laughs> That's Matt. Oh no, Matt is IT. He's the one who like codes the ship. Oh yeah, for real. No, Matt is the freaking quartermaster keeping track of navigation and all that stuff. Super smart. That's our dude. IT guy. And it's all computer now. Actually, I'd probably be like more like maintenance. I'm pretty good at fixing things. I uh, no, see, you have you have the most important role of all. Oh, what's that? Enthusiasm. Oh, thanks. Oh my god! You are one of the most necessary roles when it comes to like post-apocalyptic life, and people don't even realize that like yes you need like somebody that can grow food <laughs> and you need a hunter and you need all these different things but you know what you really need is somebody that's gonna keep a smile on your face and be like good job good job proud of better. you good morning it's a nice sunny day Do you know how many it? times i say that at work and people think i'm sarcastic like all my co all my uh, employees at work think I'm being super sarcastic where I'm like, oh, good job. I'm proud of you. And they're just like, God, fucking sarcastic. I'm like, no, I'm serious. Thank you. Thanks for doing your job. Yep. Let me acknowledge you. Some, yeah, sometimes I hate it when I'm trying to say something and I actually mean it. But the way it came out, and I even hear it myself, like, that didn't sound authentic. Right. <laughs> No, I sure as fuck am not HR. I'm not solving anybody's problems. No, no, not HR. Mm -mm. HR ladies are jerks. I'm not talking about an actual HR lady. No, she is the, she's the pat you on the back person. Yeah. You're proud of me? God, what a bitch. I know, God, what a bitch. <laughs> That's true. I guess uh, there would be a, it would be a boat full of uh, fish keepers. So I guess there isn't, there wouldn't really be a need for a maintenance person. <laughs> Everyone knows how to DIY and fix their own stuff. Yeah. You just exactly. knock on the door next door if you don't know how to do something. Hey, do you know how to do this? Nathan yeah. said, I freaking will drive that ship. <laughs> well, there we go. There's our helmsman. It's going to be Nathan. Hey, Boots over there. Hi, Bootsy. <laughs> you got to pull that up so that she can see it. <laughs> Speaking through yep. us. Oh, man. That would be but, Yeah, it would be so crazy to move this year, too. Yeah. And it's like, I'm, I'm thinking about even like how. Gosh, how would I move all this stuff with help? <laughs> well, you can see, I would have I would have to get like like serious help because when I moved to this house, I didn't have all these fish tanks and stuff. I didn't even have a couch. I had like a couple lazy boys and like a bed and stuff like that. And my roommate that, you know, moved over with me and lived with me here for like a year. He had a, a truck at the time. So we literally like I paid for an extra month or I we moved into this house, but I still had a month left on the lease of the previous rental house that we were in. So we took a whole month to just kind of progressively move everything over here in our in my little bitty car and his truck. And so moving here was really easy to do for the most part, but moving out of this house to a whole nother house, like I've never moved a house before. That's not easy. 
I and now you got a lot of stuff. And yeah, I'm gonna need to like get like a serious like U-Haul and a trailer and stuff like that. And yeah, my brother has a truck, but it's not yeah, it's not gonna work <laughs> to just have one truck. So you need plumbing, electrical, HVAC, and engineering, and an entertainment director. Probably the most important. Yep. 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 I think they're actually, isn't TJ Autocross, isn't he technically working HR? So he would be the HR person. Yeah. Yeah, because he does it. He went to college for it and everything, if I'm remembering the right person. Gina can also run saltwater fish lessons, and Danny can run the radio show with George RB3 and Jimmy P. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. I'll run the afternoon show. Well, Danny can run karaoke night. Oh, and yeah, karaoke yeah. night, of yeah. course. Afternoon show and karaoke night. Yes, TJ is HR. Every Thursday and Sunday. Yes. I remembered right. Proud of myself for remembering correct something correctly. Hmm. Oh man. Well, it's thanks. funny. It's like the idea of like a resort, like how we kind of talked about having like our own like a little fish fam convention thing and then just putting it on water. <laughs> right. Yep. But it's just, uh, it's like a community though. Yeah. We would need a pretty big boat to have this many people in a, in a yacht community. Yeah, it would have to be. Yeah, I'd say it would have to be like a small cruise what? ship. More or less. Yeah, how many, well, how hey, many we could buy an old have... barge. Buy an old barge and just build a, a house on top of it. No. Fish fingers are nice. <laughs> yeah, the Titanic could carry up to 2,435 passengers and a crew of approximately 900. Uh, for a capacity of more than 3,300 people. So, yeah, okay. in the Titanic, so, have you seen comparisons of Titanic versus. Yeah, so this is the nowadays? type of yacht we would need. Yeah. It, sh it has 39 apartments and it just hit the market. How Only much? 39? It's, it's 730 feet long. It's so let's see. The smallest apartments are close to two thousand square feet, and the largest are are over ten thousand square foot. Wow, that's nice size apartments on this yacht thing. Okay, so I'm trying to scroll to the bottom to see how much it costs. Fish fam. All okay, right. <laughs> apartments. The apartments start. At nine point five million dollars. Oh Jesus! So, no idea how much that boat would cost. <laughs> You're referencing God. a sunken ship for ideas. I'm talking about the size of it, not the Titanic. I'm not saying an exact replica. I'm just saying this: the general size of the boat. <laughs> Yo, that pool would be sponsored by Predatory Fens and have Ari Paima and Paku in it. <laughs> right? <laughs> Predatory Fins, no, that, that that's where the Ohio fish rescue would be. But I, I agree with the Ari Paima and Paku and all that stuff. Definitely. I'm out. Yeah. I don't know. I don't want to live life on a boat, honestly. <laughs> But I think you're saying I'm out as into the prices of $9.5 million, which, yeah, I'm out too. <laughs> they already made the Titanic too, I believe. Yeah, I think so. And then they made another one that was like in reference to the Titanic that was like, Another name that was like was yeah, it I like think, didn't they, or something? Yeah, didn't they try to replicate it and that one ended up hitting something and sinking? Was it also an yeah. iceberg? 
I think so. I don't yeah. know. But then there's also the conspiracy theory that like the Titanic never actually sunk. It was another ship that was very similar to it that was sunk in instead and like in intentionally sunk. That also had yeah. Titanic written on the name of like written on the don't they write it like on the bow or something? Yeah, there's people that have explored it, and that's why you know that that conspiracy theory is garbage. You know, because there's people that have actually explored the wreckage and seen Titanic written on the boat. You right. Know? Hmm. Oh, I almost forgot. So I talked about it on my stream on Wednesday a little bit, but I didn't show it. So I will screen share. Yay. What did Gina buy this week? I bought a new coffee maker. Oh, a ninja. Yeah, it's so nice. I love it so far. Um, yeah, that's a, a little bit different version than the one that my friends have. But those are really nice because, you know, you can make a whole pot. You can make a single serve cup. It's got all different yeah. sorts of like settings to do like creamer and stuff did yours come with like a milk frother and all that too no i chose not to get that one because i did look at it um because i knew i'm so bad about cleaning things like that um and i just knew i wasn't gonna i was either i was just gonna not use it after a while because i didn't feel like cleaning it uh, plus i had the little handheld one already so i was like that one works oh, fine. Yeah. i don't need yeah. a i don't need a another one um but what's really nice is that it has this drip turn off um, yep. And if you have it closed and try to run it, it actually tells you that it's closed. Like it won't, yep. it, it won't like try to run. It says drip thing closed. Yep. Yeah. It Doesn't beeps matter. at you and it'll flash that little close sign. And I'm like, oh, sweet. Now I did discover that if you don't have this top closed all the way, like if it's just like mostly down, but not clicked, it will still run because I did it. And uh, I got water all over my counter. Yep. <laughs> Oh, my coffee maker will do that, too. Gosh, if I even had the lid open, it'll still run. That's, <laughs> That's what just, I mean. I didn't close the lid cheap. all the way. Yeah. Well, but I mean, mine, if I open it like this much, it'll still just, like, try to run. And just, like, the water will just go down the back. <laughs> yeah. So I really use the, I use the function over ice because I've been really in the ice coffee lately. So that bottom burner doesn't turn on. So I can put a normal glass in there. Oh yeah, nice. it's so nice. I love it. I love it so much so far. See, normally if I'm gonna do like iced coffee, I I do it a day ahead. So I will brew um, and I started doing this in summertime, and it's about time to start doing it. So I still fill this thing up, but instead of brewing my coffee in the morning and having it nice and hot, I brew it the night before and put it in a uh like a a different container and I just put it in the fridge. I've also, I've just been using like pickle jars and stuff to do it. Cause it's like the perfect size A full pickle jars. Like, there you go. Yeah. So it's not watered down. You get more coffee. Yep. So I get, it's, it's already cold. And then I add a whole bunch of ice to it. So that it just stays cold. And then like, yeah, the, the, the creamer is cold too. So it's just, it's already nice and cold. And I get a nice big glass of iced coffee. That's not watered down. And just full of milk like you get at freaking Starbucks. It only has this much coffee, this much milk, and a bunch of ice. <laughs> right. Yeah. Man, oh man, but this has been a pretty good show. We've had at least like 15 people here the whole time. We kind of stuck around that like 20 viewers or so, kind of up and down around there. But What's lame, Bunny? So. What happened? Who's lame? Am I lame? Probably. I can be lame sometimes. All these <laughs> damn icebergs coming out of nowhere. <laughs> Never know when one will jump out in front of your <laughs> ship. I know. Who put that tree there, right? Stupid. And somebody at work ran into something. I don't remember if they just walked into it or if it was with a cart or whatever or with a U-boat. And I was like, I, it jumped in front of you. I saw it. I saw it. It jumped right out in front of you. Dang thing. And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it really bothers me how there's that certain tool that businesses use and they call them U-boats. What do you call what it? What do you call it? 
Well, no, that's what it, that's what it, I call it. But I just I hate that name because I mean it makes sense because it's like it's it's U shaped or whatever. And but I don't know why it, it it's, it's called a boat, but it just bothers me that they call it a U boat because a U boat is a it's a German submarine. Right, so that's, right. that's what I think of every time I hear a U-boat is a German submarine. So Bootsy. There's suddenly There's starting suddenly to be an echo. Oh. I'm echoing. No, I not. talk quietly. There's no echo. What changed? Hey. What did you do? Sandwiches for lunch. I eat dead babies and gunpowder for breakfast. <laughs> oh, fake Titanic is lame. <laughs> yeah. I haven't had a sub sandwich in a while. We did start a diet back up. And it's been really hard. Because everybody at work gets sweets and offers me candy. And I have to tell them no. Yeah. I'm very sad about it. I'm glad that I can eat whatever I want. And I just don't care about if I get a little bit more overweight or whatever. I ain't trying to impress anybody. I just this. want to do it for me. I don't like it. It's yeah. not because of society. It's because of me. It's because I don't like it. That's the only reason why. Yep. Well, I mean, I'm trying to eat a little bit less so I can lose a little bit of the gut. Because it definitely got a little bit bigger than I was expecting it to. And so <laughs> it's like, oh, wow. That's me in the mirror. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, no, I mean, I, I'm glad I, that I don't have like any dietary restrictions that I like have to abide by though. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, I'm sure if I went to the doctor, they'd probably say something about how I'd be like, oh, you need to start getting on a healthier diet or whatever. But I don't have anybody telling me that right now. So. <laughs> I do need to go back to the doctor. I don't I have health to be on any low sodium diet. I don't have to avoid sugars. I'm don't, I don't have any gluten allergies or any shrimp allergies or anything like that. Even yes. though my brother is allergic to shrimp, um, you don't have any re dietary restrictions. Yes. yes. Yeah, <laughs> and that's the big thing. Here. I know that, um, and I'm hoping I die before I have any. So, um. But yeah, it's the uh, I'm glad I don't have to worry about that stuff yet um, because I love macaroni and cheese. Eat gluten for breakfast. Yeah, Aldi's been out of uh, um, English muffins. That's kind of my like lower calorie bread that I kind of compromise and still eat because I freaking love bread. Yeah. So. I'm not, I don't plan on like completely cutting it out, but just like shrink it down. So English muffins. English muffins. You can always do potato bread. Oh, I could do potato bread. <laughs> the Titanic was my fault. I asked the captain for some ice for my iced coffee. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Well, guys, it's we're, we're here at the end of the stream. Yeah. It's easy. Like I said earlier, I can't believe that Gina and I have been doing this like more or less every Saturday night for a solid two years now. I mean, just starting on season three. And, you know, a lot of stuff is going to happen this year. Uh, you know, I, I'm getting a new car, I'm getting a new hair, and that's just the start of everything that's going to happen. I have no idea what is in store for this year and, you know, what's going to happen with just me. But you also got all the stuff with Gina, too. Yeah. So, and, uh, go ahead. Rachel, you did meet Danny. He was at the Keystone Clash. Last year. Yes. I met you, Boots Cats, Boots Cats. Yeah. 
I can't believe you. Or don't... unless she's talking to Moose. She might be talking to Moose. Oh, she's probably talking to Moose. Context. Okay. That's what this is all about. She just got a new right? skateboard. The fuck I am. Uh uh. I will die. I will die. <laughs> yeah, I was I'm talking, talking about Moose. Okay. <laughs> no, I will not get on a skateboard. Uh uh. Mm -mm. I will break. Yeah. I will break my first bone. So many things in store for this year. I was hoping to already have cuttlefish by now and all these different things. But man, like stuff keeps happening. But you know what? With this car, I'm going to have a couple grand left over to, uh, you know, do some stuff with, pay off my credit card. And uh, then uh, I might just say, I might just say, screw making this sump. <laughs> I might just buy one. <laughs> yeah. Or I might just, you know, go out and buy some glass that's and just have it cut to the sizes that I need so that I can finish making this up my own way. We shall see. But anyway, guys, thank you for watching. And uh, we will see you next week on another episode of Fish and Friends. Bye. Bye. So long. And thanks for the fish.